very good day to all you patriots out there, and welcome back to Tall Ship Tuesday. Now, last we had convened, I shared with you a story about uh, Captain John Pitt Rathbun's encounter with a mysterious ghost ship when Providence was sailing down the Gulf Stream. Now, I received a, another letter with an update from Captain Rathbun. He tells me that the next made sure, and they searched diligently in the papers for any news of a shipwrecked crew, or an abandoned ship or the like, but uh, they found absolutely nothing. And so the French ship remains a mystery. Now, one thing that is not mysterious, however, is the prize money. Rathbun tells me that the goods from the French ship, combined with a schooner that took prize, resulted in over $3,000 in prize money. His own share was $363, seven times his monthly pay. His first officers received half of that, of course, and their petty officers and the crewmen proportionately less. Still a very fine amount, and I hope that one will help him retain his crew, as men are proving very difficult in this sort of encounters. Very difficult to keep as the work carries on, you know. Rathbun says that because it was so late in the season, he planned only a short cruise for their next voyage. A wise choice, I think. And yet, they were foiled almost at once by a terrific gale that split Providence's great bowsprit straight down the middle. The crew rode out the storm as best they could, uh, fished the bowsprit out with some extra line, but uh, Rathbun had to adjust his plans and turn southward for Charleston for repairs. When I at last re arrived, it was nightfall. Rathbun elected to wait for daybreak and a pilot to find them and bring them into the harbour. So they kept the sloop standing off Charleston Bar. In the wee hours of the morning, the lookout sighted a sail inshore headed toward Providence. The lieutenant of the watch called Captain Rathbun and Trevet to the quarterdeck. Rathbun quickly ordered the bosun to call the hands to quarters, but without using a whistle. Thus, when the privateer cannot came up alongside, Providence's crew was ready for them and answered their first flash with a proper Yankee broadside. <laughs> the privateer ran to the eastward, and not having a single injury aboard, Providence made sail after them. Providence soon began to overhaul the chase. Then the privateer hoisted a lantern at her masthead, which gave Rathbun pause. He believed the privateer was signalling another ship, you see. And so he ordered that no more cannon be fired and to continue the chase in darkness and silence. At daybreak, he discovered the wisdom of his decision, as a large ship was lying to the windward. Evidently, this emboldened the crew aboard the privateer as the lieutenant on the roundhouse fired several shots at Providence, which overshot the vessel. Captain Trevet told Rathbun that he believed their own muskets were superior and asked permission to return fire. Rathbun granted it, so Trevet took two of his marines and fired back. The lieutenant made a fine target, standing on his roundhouse as he was. <laughs> Rathbun says they not fired but three shots when they saw the lieutenant fall. The privateer then turned into the wind and within minutes Providence was alongside. After boarding they discovered the lieutenant had fallen directly upon the men standing at the ship's wheel, killing them both. The lieutenant was found with a fine brace of pistols beside him on the deck, indicating that he was determined not to be taken alive. And so he was not, although uh, not in the way he had expected. The privateer had been heavily damaged by Providence's cannons, and five men wounded in addition to the men dead. The captured officers admitted they had indeed signalled to the larger ship in the night, and were in collision with her. Collusion with her, that is. Given that the ship stood between Providence and Charleston Harbour, Rathbun changed his course and sailed to George Cape, South Carolina instead, where they put in for repairs and arranged to sell their prize. Uh, now, not the voyage that Rathbun had expected, to be sure, but uh, satisfying in his own way. I'm most impressed particularly in the way that Rathbun and his crew were able to uh, manoeuvre Providence and uh, figure out their situation, even with the loss of the bowsprit in the beginning of the battle. I suppose it goes as a lesson to show that uh, even without one's uh, typical resources, you can still find a way to figure out your surroundings and get your bearings so that you can 
the hold your own in a fight, you know? Well, uh, that's the end of the letter, but certainly not the end of the tale, so I do hope you'll return next week's Tall Ship Tuesday, and we can continue from there with hopefully a new letter from Captain John Pickrathbun. I do thank you very much for your time, and I hope to see you soon.